This is the brand new M1 Mac Mini. And I know it kind of looks identical to the 2014 Mac Mini, but it's actually fully, fully new. This is also the most affordable uh, Mac that you can buy right now, and also, possibly, the most powerful Mac ever made. Like, really? Is this a thing now? Yeah, it seems so. You see, we've already done crazy detailed videos on the new M1 MacBook Pro, as well as the new M1 MacBook Air, where we tested benchmarks, real-world use, gaming, battery, and so, so much more. But in this video, it is all about the Mac Mini and seeing how it compares against the Intel equivalent, which Apple still sells, by the way, to this very day. So, get us snacks ready, sit back, relax, and let's see if you're better off just buying the M1 Mac Mini or if the Intel model still stacks up quite well. Okay, Daniel from a different time here with an important announcement from our sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark offers you an 83% discount plus three months for free when using the coupon code Zone of Tech. What is Surfshark, you might ask? Well, it is a VPN. But you see, unlike other VPNs, which can cost £10 a month or some even more than that, Surfshark only costs £1.71 a month. Yeah, that's actually less than a cup of coffee here in the UK. Also, unlike other VPNs, Surfshark lets you use it on an unlimited number of devices. And it's very easy and very fast to use. With literally one tap, you're automatically connected to the fastest possible network. And I was literally getting the same speeds I was getting when I wasn't using a VPN. And what does a VPN do, you might ask? Well, number one, it protects you from hackers that might scoop into your data when you're browsing from public Wi-Fi, such as at an airport, a hotel, and so on. Number two, it allows you to access Netflix and any other website and service for that matter from a different location. What this means is that I can watch Netflix US here in the UK and get access to TV shows that I normally would not have access to. And number three, it works on anything. iOS, Android, PC, Mac, Linux, Smart TVs, Amazon Fire Stick, Apple TV, Chrome, Firefox, Xbox, and PlayStation. Simply use the coupon code Zone of Tech to get an 83% discount plus three months for free. And thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Okay, so taking a look at these two machines, unlike the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air, where they pretty much look identical to the Intel models, the Mac Mini actually does have a lot of visual changes. The first one being the color, the Intel one came and still comes in space gray, whereas the M1 model only comes in silver. Which kind of makes me think that Apple is targeting this model at entry-level users, and then next year they might have a Mac Mini Pro model that replaces the Intel model, and then also comes in space gray. That is my guess. Come back to this video in a year and, I don't know, leave a thumbs up if I'm right. But aside from that, the Mac Mini also drops two Thunderbolt 3 ports, as we only have two instead of four now which I think is a massive downgrade, and then it also drops the 10 gigabit Ethernet port in favor of just a 1 gigabit Ethernet port, another massive downgrade for Pro users. And also another reason why I generally think that there is a Mac Mini Pro coming next year at some point. Other than that, the new M1 Mac Mini has considerably more empty space inside, as the logic board is quite a bit smaller now. It then consumes 60% less power, and while it still has a fan, it mostly runs silent, and the entire machine runs very cool as well, as opposed to the Intel counterparts, which, well, you'll get to see in just a second. Now, in terms of the specs on these two machines, our Intel model is almost entirely maxed out. So it has the top-of-the-line 6-core Intel Core i7 processor, 8th gen, um, 32 gigabytes of RAM and 2 terabytes of storage. And then on top of that, we also have an RX 5700 XT eGPU connected to this Mac Mini uh, using a Razer Core X uh, external graphic enclosure. And we will be using the eGPU for a few benchmarks testing the graphical performance on this Mac Mini as well. Now the M1 Mac Mini, this is literally the baseline model with 8 gigabytes of RAM and no eGPU, as unfortunately it does not support it. Okay, benchmarks time. So we first ran a boot test to see if there was any difference, and uh, yes, there was quite a major one. So the Intel model booted up in 32 seconds, while the M1 model booted up in 19 seconds. Yeah, pretty major difference between the two. And the time it took to wake from sleep was also improved by not as much as the MacBooks were, but we still got to see an improvement. So the Intel Mac Mini took 4 seconds to wake up from sleep, while the M1 model took 3 seconds. 
However, the MacBook Pro M1 and the MacBook Air, uh, they only took 0.5 seconds. And the reason why uh, the Mac Mini actually took longer was because it also had to power the external display, which itself, you know, took a while to turn on. Uh, so there you go. The actual wake from sleep time is likely very similar to the MacBook Pros in reality. Next up, we tested the CPU performance using Geekbench 5 running natively on both of these machines. And here, the Intel model got 1073 points in the single core performance, while the M1 got 1717. That's a 60% improvement. Not only that, but in the multi-core performance, while the Intel model got 5418 points, the M1 got 7581 a 40% improvement. Now, if you guys have seen the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air videos, you probably remember that those had an even higher improvement. Uh, the MacBook Air, for example, had a 267% improvement over the Intel Air, and that's mostly because, uh, well, the MacBook Air Intel only has two cores, and the M1 has eight cores. The Intel Mac Mini has six cores, and the M1 Mac Mini has eight, so the difference isn't as massive in terms of the core counts, uh, as compared to the MacBook Air. Then we tested Cinebench, which runs a continuous test which stresses out the CPU over a longer period of time rather than the spiky tests that Geekbench runs. And here the Intel model got 7,175 points, while the M1 got 7,764. A much smaller difference than I was expecting here, to be honest, of just 8%. Now, in terms of the clock speed, the Intel model was running at 3.49 GHz, while the M1 was running at 2.988. What was even more surprising, though, was the fact that the Intel model was drawing 64.83 watts of power when rendering the Cinebench benchmark, while the M1 was just drawing 12.75 watts, and it even scored higher. And when it came to the temperatures, the Intel model was running at 97 degrees Celsius, while the M1 was running at 60 degrees. And you almost couldn't hear that fan at all on the M1 model, whereas the fan on the Intel was spinning like crazy. We also measured the chassis temperature with our high-end fluoride thermal camera and the Intel model was at 41 degrees Celsius while the M1 was sitting at 33 degrees. Next up, we wanted to do some real-world testing starting with Lightroom. So we imported 228 raw photos on both of these machines which included .tiff and .dng files up to 50 megapixels in size from different cameras. The Intel Mac Mini took 40 seconds to import, while the M1, interesting, actually took longer at 44 seconds. Then we applied some edits, and we copied and pasted all of those edits onto all the other 227 raw photos. And the Intel model took 1 minute and 3 seconds to paste these edits, while the M1 actually took longer at 1 minute and 7 seconds. Now, you should be aware that Lightroom has not been optimized uh, for the M1 chip just yet, so everything is running through Rosetta on the M1 Mac Mini. So it's pretty impressive that we got almost the exact same numbers. Now, the fact that the M1 got lower could be due to the fact that it has less RAM than the Intel model. We have 8 gigabytes on the M1 versus 32 on the Intel, uh, but even then, there wasn't as much of a difference as I was expecting. Now, when it came to the fluidity of scrolling through the Lightroom library, uh, they were both pretty much identical, so the experience was very, very smooth on both. Then we wanted to see how fast both of these machines would open up a few native macOS apps. So here we have Final Cut Pro, Compressor, Motion, Calendar, Notes, Safari, Settings, and Text Edit, and opening all of them at the same time took 14 seconds on the Intel Mac Mini compared to just 9 seconds on the M1 Mac Mini. Interesting enough, this was actually 2 full seconds faster than uh, what it took on the M1 MacBook Pro and the M1 MacBook Air. Maybe an evidence that the cooling system is quite a bit better on the Mac Mini compared to the Air, which doesn't even have a fan, and even the MacBook Pro, um, but you'll get to see that in some of the upcoming tests. We then ran a disk speed test to see if the SSD speed has been improved or not from the Intel model, and here the Intel model got 2446 megabytes per second in terms of the write speeds compared to 2804 on the M1 Mac Mini only a 358 megabyte per second difference, which I honestly don't think that people will actually notice. 
Now, in terms of the read speeds, the Intel model got 2,638 megabytes per second, while the M1 got 2,742. Faster, but again, nothing too significant here. So what about some actual real world usage tests? Well, here we have our actual iPhone 12 Pro camera comparison timeline. So this is a 4K30 timeline, but we also have 4K60 clips in it. We have five actually, picture-in-picture -picture clips, color grading on my clip, as well as titles and effects, like the animated background behind me. And on top of that, the length of this entire project is 33 minutes long. So overall, this is honestly our most demanding project ever. And the uh, Intel model took five hours <laughs> and 24 minutes to export this full project. That's insane. Now, as a comparison, my 2020 13 inch Intel 10th gen MacBook Pro, that one took four hours and 30 minutes. Uh, as that model does have a newer and more powerful integrated GPU, the G7 graphics from Intel. However, the M1 Mac mini only took 50 minutes to export this. <laughs> so that was almost 6.5 times faster. Absolutely incredible performance on the M1 model. Now with the Intel Mac mini, you can also connect an eGPU. And we connected the RX 5700 XT, which is really one of the very best GPUs that is compatible with the Intel Mac mini. And with the eGPU connected, we got a much better result of only one hour and 17 minutes. So much faster than before, but still almost half an hour slower than the M1 Mac Mini without an eGPU. Next up, we took the exported file and we converted it into an H.265 file using Compressor. Now, the difference here is that when converting into H.265, the Intel Mac Mini would actually be using that T2 processor, which should be faster than just using the integrated Intel graphics when you're exporting in H.264. And here, the Intel Mac Mini converted the file in just 20 minutes and 24 seconds, while the M1 Mac Mini converted it in 18 minutes and 58 seconds. So actually a very small difference between the two. So it seems that as long as the Intel Mac Mini is using that T2 chip for video rendering, the differences between the two are quite small. We then connected the 5700 XT eGPU to the Intel Mac Mini, and interesting enough, we got the exact same result as Compressor wasn't actually using the GPU at all. So you can probably tell that if you have an eGPU, which obviously costs extra, it really depends on the apps that will have to be optimized to take full advantage of the GPU, which Compressor doesn't do it, and Final Cut kind of does it, but still not as well as we would have wanted. Now, in terms of the timeline fluidity, in the very same Final Cut Pro 10 project, surprisingly, the Intel Mac Mini was way more fluid in performance mode than the M1 model. So you're probably thinking that this is because the M1 only has 8GB of RAM. Well, we also tested a 16GB of RAM M1 MacBook Pro and Air, and the Intel Mac Mini played this project back better than all the M1 Macs. Very, very strange. Now, I gotta say, this was a very complex project indeed, with 5 picture-in-picture -picture 4K clips, but still, I was not expecting the M1 to lose to the Intel models here. And when it came to the playback and quality mode, this was more similar, but the Intel model was still a bit better here. We then wanted to see how well both of these machines would handle 8K video playback using Chrome, which has now been optimized for the M1 SoC. And here, as you can probably tell, the M1 does play back quite a bit better. Now, the Intel stopped a few times as it couldn't keep up, but the M1 was noticeably more fluid. So what about some actual gaming now? Well, here we have World of Warcraft, which is actually running natively on the M1 Mac Mini. Yes, this is the only AAA game that runs natively, to my knowledge at least. Now, on the Intel Mac Mini, at a resolution of 2560 by 1600, and with all the settings maxed out, we got 9 frames per second, so pretty much unplayable at those settings at least. However, on the M1 Mac Mini, with the same graphical settings and a resolution of uh, 2560 by 1440, as for some reason the game didn't let us select 2560 by 1600, which was indeed a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, but on the Intel Mac Mini, we could actually select it to that for some reason. But anyways, at this resolution, 2560 by 1440 on the M1, and also maxed out settings, it got 35 frames per second. So fully playable, and of course that you could also turn down some of the settings and easily bring that up to 60 FPS or even higher. We then connected the GPU to the Intel Mac Mini with the same 5700 XT graphics, 
um, which was connected to a monitor for the best possible performance. And this time we got a constant 60 FPS experience. So there you go. If you do plan on uh, using an eGPU and you also plan on you know gaming on your Mac, then the Intel model is a far better option than the M1 is. And not only that, but the Intel model also supports Windows through Boot Camp, which the M1 does not. This means that you can actually run far more games in Windows with an eGPU if you decide to go that route. But I do have to mention that at the moment, eGPU support in Windows is broken. The only laptops that I've seen to be working fine with eGPUs are Razer laptops and Dell XPS laptops. Anything else from what I've been researching and testing is broken at the moment due to a Windows update. So do keep that in mind, Code 12 is is real. <laughs> so at the moment, eGPUs don't work that well on Windows, unfortunately. Next up, we wanted to do a graphical benchmark with GFX Bench and see if we would get similar results to what we got in World of Warcraft. These benchmarks were also running natively on the M1 Max. And running the Manhattan benchmark, the Intel Mac Mini got 10 frames per second, while the M1 model got 51, guys. 51 frames per second, that's more than a five time difference. So we connected the GPU again to the Intel model, and this time, surprise, surprise, the Intel model got 60 FPS, higher than on the M1 Mac, uh, but the M1 still performed incredibly well, considering that this was just an integrated GPU and we didn't have any GPU connected. Now, we've been running all these tests with the exact same 4K display connected to uh, these Mac Minis, so now, let's see what happens if you run the same benchmark, but off-screen. This would simulate the GPU performance that you would be getting when exporting a video or when using some apps that don't display the result in real time on the screen. And here, the Intel model got 27 frames per second, while the M1 got 131, which was 4.85 times faster. However, when we connected the eGPU, the Intel Mac Mini actually got 416 almost 3.2 times faster than the M1. So in the end, which Mac Mini should you guys get? Because you know, you can actually buy both of them right now. Well, it's a tricky one because it fully depends on what you wanna do. If you play games and have an eGPU connected, then definitely go for the Intel model as eGPUs are not supported on the M1 Max, at least not at the moment. Uh, maybe when AMD releases uh, optimized drivers for ARM processors and macOS, of course, maybe we will be getting eGPU support, but at the moment, eGPUs do not work on the M1 Max. Not only that, but being able to run Windows and also run Windows games with that eGPU connected, once that's up and running again, of course, is a major plus for the Intel model. And same goes for if you, I don't know, wanna run graphic intensive apps such as Maya or any 3D intensive app, uh, that would be GPU intensive, and that would make full and good use of that eGPU. Then again, go for the Intel model. If you need 10 gigabit ethernet, then again, get the Intel model. If you need four Thunderbolt 3 ports, then again, go for the Intel model. Uh, if you want to be able to upgrade the RAM yourself, then go for the Intel model. If you want the Space Gray model, then you get the idea. So why would you get an M1 Mac Mini then? Well, anything that you do that is CPU intensive is going to be much faster on the M1 model. And anything that uses the integrated graphics is again going to be much faster on the M1 compared to the Intel model without the GPU. So yeah, long story short, if you don't have an eGPU and you don't plan on getting an eGPU, then definitely go for the M1 model. Fun fact, I believe that for the price of one of these Intel Mac Minis and an eGPU, you can actually buy two baseline M1 Mac Minis. Then if you're a video editor that uses Final Cut Pro 10 compressor and motion, again, go for the M1 model. Not only that, but just using the M1 Max, they all feel significantly more fluid and more responsive than using the Intel models. So if I were you, I would honestly just get the M1 as it's so much more future proof. But if you're not sure, I would suggest waiting until next year as I really do believe that Apple will have a Mac Mini Pro with more ports, 10 gigabit ethernet as well, and hopefully even a space gray color next year. But let me know which one would you go for and why. Definitely subscribe, hit the bell icon. If you wanna see more in-depth tech videos like this one, hopefully was. This has been Zenoff Tech, I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoff Tech, signing out. Cheers.